A couple of years ago, I made a video about Lander and why I don't think it's real mastering, but uh, I spoke in pretty general lines about, you know, what it does, what it doesn't do, but I didn't give any examples. And with the latest couple of videos that I made about AI, and I'm going to make another one after this, uh, I wanted to give you an example of how does Lander or algorithmic mastering or even algorithmic mixing, if you could find some kind of algorithm. I'm sure there are things like that, that you can just bring them the stems, like a kick drum, snare, bass guitar, guitar, vocals, and they'll just mix it for you based on AI. So I wanted to, first of all, um, give a very clear outline on how these things work and why um, they can't really replace uh, human interaction. So the best way for me to explain how these things actually work is with a bit of a metaphor imagine that you have a car and you bring it to the garage and you want it to be something else let's say you bring a bus to the garage and you want it to be formula one you want it to be like a very flat formula one car very, very fast now if that's the case and the mechanic is an ai mechanic like you know just like you're bringing your song to lander or to some kind of algorithmic mastering platform and we'll just compare the two it will say all right you have a bus this is a formula one formula one is really short so here's your bus i'm just going to cut it and the formula one has uh, a lot of power in this part so i'm just going to increase the power and the formula one car that also is my reference as an ai is white and your bus is um red so i'm going to also color it white and what you end up getting is not a Formula One, but it's half a bus painted white, pretty much. And that's what um, AI does. AI only works with data. It, it doesn't know the real world. It doesn't know what's the difference between a bus and a Formula One. It's just like, okay, you bring this, you want that. According to my data, this has this much stuff, this has that much stuff, and I'm just going to cut. And it, it doesn't really care about the results. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's how it works when you bring a song to um, algorithmic mixing or algorithm mastering. It just listens to the track, you give it a reference. So it says, all right, this is the reference. It has a certain amount of high frequency, a certain amount of mids. This is your track. It has a certain amount of mids and highs and lows. I'm just going to cut it so that they're the same. It doesn't care if the result is good. It's not even aware if the result is good. It just does what it does based on data. Now, a real mixing engineer or mastering engineer like me would not say, all right, you want a, uh, you want me to take this bus and turn it into a Formula One, so let's just cut it in half or something. I would first of all tell someone, listen, you have a bus. This will not turn into a Formula One no matter what. So what I can do for you is make this bus the best bus it can be. And if you're interested in um, making Formula Ones, I can also teach you that. But this will not turn into that. And that's the main difference between a human being and a machine that works with data. It doesn't have this way of looking at the big picture and just saying, this, this is not going to work. That's not going to turn into that. I can teach you how to make this, or I can show you how to make that in another example, and I can improve this, but this will not be that. So hopefully you have a better idea of what uh, algorithmic mastering is. Uh, I also have another video, I'll link it in the description about uh, what's the real difference also when it comes to other things when it comes to mastering, so just so that you have the full picture. And uh, yeah, hope you find this useful, and thank you for listening.